With the departure of the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, the Beluga XL is likely to become the largest commercial aircraft in the world still in production. With its large hump and vast interior space, it is perfectly suited for carrying aircraft components like a pair of Airbus A350 wings across Europe. But looking at the aircraft, you can't help but wonder if Airbus ever gave any thought to converting these planes into passenger usage. After all, wouldn't it have all the advantages of the Airbus A380 but with twin jet economics? In today's video, we'll be doing just that, breaking down the Beluga XL into a passenger aircraft, seeing how many it could carry and if the idea makes any sense at all. Let's take off. If you haven't already seen part one of this video about why the Beluga XL exists, then you can check out the video here on the channel. It's a doozy with 3D models of all the types. So you managed to get your hands on a new Beluga XL. How? Why? Who knows? But now you've sent me this crazy email to turn it into a passenger plane. Let's start by seeing what we have to work with. The Beluga XL is 63.1 meters long and has a wingspan of 60 meters wide, which is around the same size of an Airbus A330-200, which is what the Beluga XL is based on. The real advantage, of course, is the internal area of the space, 2,209 square cubes of it. The internal area of the plane is 46 meters long, 7.9 meters tall, and 7.7 .7 meters wide, not including the sub-level cargo deck for freight. Compared to the external cross-section of the A380, it's actually bigger on the inside. The Airbus A380 has a fuselage dimension of 8.4 meters, its cabin is 6.5 meters wide, and 50 meters long, meaning our bad boy XL can fit so much in it. So let's install some seats. Time to do some maths. Looking at the cross section of the plane, it's clear we can fit in two decks. Each deck would have a twin aisle design. These two aisles would be 40 inches combined width, or one meter, leaving us with 670 centimeters, or 264 inches to play with. If each seat was an average 18 inches wide, or 46 centimeters, that means we can fill in 14 and a half seats across. This would have to be in a 3443 configuration. And it seems, friends, that we have created a monster. We might have to take out a seat in the middle to make a third aisle for FAA evacuation regulations, so we'll say 14 seats across. If the seats have 31 inches of legroom, or 70 centimeters, then we could fit in around 55 or so rows, leaving room for door spaces and lavatories. This would mean that on one deck, 14 passengers in 55 rows would be 770 passengers if all economy in the tightest configuration possible. If we include a second level, it's likely that we could get this plane up to 1,200 passengers if all economy. We would lose some more space for toilets, galleys and stairs, as well as the lower level being more narrow than upstairs. Naturally, we want to also include some premium space for our more esteemed viewers, which would mean bumping off around 500 passengers and including a full cabin of 22-inch business class seats instead on the lower deck. This deck being based on the floor plan of the A330-200 fuselage would be smaller with 525 centimeters or 17 feet and three inches across. This space would have the same twin aisles and fit six business class seats in a 1-2-1 open suite configuration. At 78 inches of legroom or 200 centimeters per seat, we could fit 20 or so rows, give or take a few areas for doors, galleys, and a bar, because I love bars on planes, and this allows us to have four passengers per row or 80 passengers in total. This gives us a total capacity of around 880 passengers on board. The A380, by comparison, is rated to 538 on the main deck and 330 on the upper. So yeah, suck it Airbus A380. 
The width of the plane would also lead to some pretty crazy ideas, such as including suites, private cabins, and even a restaurant and dining areas. After all, remember that cargo subdeck I mentioned? It's a cozy 16 meters long and shares the same width as upstairs. If not filled with passenger suitcases or other freight, this deck could be a boarding lounge like the L1011 or a private sleeping cabin. The cockpit would be secluded away on this deck as well, with four passenger seats for crew members. Because the aircraft has a giant door on the front, this could actually be used as a way to very quickly board and disembark passengers. After all, the front of the plane comes off, and everyone could just get off that way. Alternatively, if the door functionality was removed, the front of the plane could just house a window that passengers on both decks could look out of. After all, the cockpit isn't in the way. And do you know what the craziest part of this idea is? The aircraft could be a combi plane. Because of the way it's designed, who's to say that the passenger section couldn't be slotted in and out where needed? If the airline wanted to operate cargo-only flights, then it could pull out the passenger tube from the cargo compartment and slot in cargo decks instead. The plane would also only have the footprint of an Airbus A330, and that would mean it could land at smaller airports and require no change to airport gates. Although to board so many passengers at once, the airports would likely use multiple jet bridges. This means that the plane would be very attractive to airlines and be incredibly flexible to fly nearly to any airport in the world. Now, let's be serious. Can we get serious now? There are some performance issues with the design, and that being the hype beast that I am, I haven't mentioned yet. Let's jump into it. This plane only has a cruise speed of Mach 0.69, meaning that it takes a little bit longer to get to where you need to go. It also only flies at a lower 11,000 meters or 35,000 feet, which would make it slightly more susceptible to clouds and other weather events. Lastly, and this is the real kicker, it only has a range of 2,300 nautical miles, or 4,300 kilometers. Why is this a problem? Well, you see, London to New York is 5,570 kilometers, or 3,008 nautical miles putting the plane out of practical use for arguably one of the most popular routes in the world. The next problem is a bit more serious, and special thanks to subscriber Michael Bravo for crunching these numbers for us. If we have 600 passengers on board, with an average weight of 75 kilograms, or around about 165 pounds, I won't get into the average weight of the American passenger here, then that's a total of 45,000 kilograms, or nearly 100,000 pounds, which is nearly the upper weight limit already. These passengers need something to sit on, entertainment, food, water, windows, bathrooms, and more, adding up the weight. And that level in between the decks doesn't come cheap. Then the plane itself needs fuel, at least 73,000 kilograms of it to fly its maximum distance, and another 22,000 to reach New York, which is around 100,000 kilograms of fuel in total. But that's not all. We also need additional fuel for alternative destinations due to bad weather, 30 minutes for holding flight, another 30 minutes for holding time circling, and additional fuel for an engine going out in flight if the plane itself can fly loaded with just one engine. Adding this all up, you come to an upper limit of 188 passengers with no luggage, leaving most of the plane empty and with barely anything in the tank. Realistically, you would have just paid for a ticket on a giant paperweight that couldn't even leave Toulouse, let alone cross the Atlantic. At least, there would be plenty of legroom. Now, you're likely thinking, Nick, this is great and all, and you're a handsome fellow, but this is never going to happen. Well, maybe, because it turns out that Airbus fully intends to sell or rent off the Beluga aircraft at the end of their service life at Airbus, likely within the next 20 years. This means that this aircraft could see a second life for all sorts of operations, including passenger. 
Airbus recently has gone as far to ask for ETOPS certification to fly the aircraft across oceans, meaning they are fully considering either using these planes for overseas charters or even considering increased production. And for those few people who are asking me in the comments how many passengers a beluga whale can carry from part one of this video, well, I suppose if you could tame it, perhaps around two or three people like a giant Pokemon. But then again, what do I know? I'm a plane channel. You're thinking of the whale channel, Discovery and Notified. And if you made it this far into the video and you haven't checked out my part one, then you can do it here, where I go into the history of the type and why these aircraft are so fascinating. And as for the future of this series of turning crazy cargo planes into passenger versions, well, I know there's a pretty big other aircraft I wouldn't mind looking at. But that will have to wait for the next video. Today's video idea comes from the many people who have offered suggestions in the comments and who have supported the channel and got us to an incredible 50,000 subscribers. I truly can't believe how lucky I am and I want to say thanks to all of you who have clicked that like button, commented down below and decided to stick around to see me make videos about aeroplanes. And to that man who said I would never succeed when I first started making videos on YouTube, I want to say thanks so much for being wrong. And if you want to support this channel further, then we have a Patreon that you can jump onto. I'm going to be adding a Discord soon for patrons to check out, live stream with me and chat to me as I work. If you want to know more, there's a link in the description. Thank you again so much for watching.